Welcome to Diseases Simplified, the podcast that breaks down medical science into clear, accessible conversations. Hosted by a U.S. board-certified medical doctor, this show is designed to help you understand your body, your symptoms, and the science behind common diseases without the medical jargon. Whether you're a curious listener, a student, or someone navigating your own health journey, you're in the right place for reliable, simplified, and evidence-based information. Let's make medicine make sense together. Hello, and welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're going to talk about something called a lacunar stroke. And look, I get it. Hearing the word stroke is, well, it's scary. But our goal here is to just break it down, make it super clear, and show you that understanding what's going on is really the first big step. So let's just dive right in. So to get our heads around this, let's start with a really simple question. Just imagine your brain has this amazing but super complex plumbing system. What do you think would happen if one of the tiniest, tiniest pipes way deep inside got clogged up? That one simple question That's pretty much the whole story right there. So that tiny clogged pipe, well, it has an official name. It's called a lacunar stroke. You might also hear doctors call it a lacunar infarct. Don't let that word throw you. Infarct is just the medical way of saying there's damage because the blood couldn't get through. So yep, a lacunar stroke is just a blockage in one of those little deep down arteries in the brain. All right, so we're talking about a clog in the system. And even though lacunar stroke sounds kind of big and complicated, the idea itself is actually really straightforward. We're talking about a small clog in a small pipe that can still make a difference. You might be thinking this is some super rare thing, but it's actually not. About 20% of all strokes, so that's one in every five, are lacunar strokes. So it's a really common and well-understood type of stroke. So why do these little arteries get blocked? Well, here's a cool way to think about it. Most of your arteries branch off kind of like a big tree getting smaller and smaller. But the ones deep in your brain, they're different. They shoot right off the big main arteries. It's kind of like hooking a tiny little garden hose directly up to a fire hydrant. All that pressure year after year can start to damage that little hose, you know? It makes it weak. And that leads us to maybe the most important thing we're gonna talk about today, the warning signs. With any kind of stroke, every single second counts. They say time is brain for a reason. Acting fast changes everything. The best way to remember the signs is this little acronym, B-E-F-A-S-T. Let's run through it. B is for balance, like a sudden dizziness or loss of coordination. E is for eyes, any sudden change in your vision. F is for face. Does one side of the face look like it's drooping? A is for arms. If you raise both arms, does one of them drift down? S is for speech. Is it slurred? or are you having trouble finding words? And the biggest one, T is for time. Time to call for help right away. Now this is so, so important. Never ever decide to just wait and see if the symptoms go away. Sometimes they do. It might only last a few minutes. That's called a TIA or a mini stroke. But listen, a TIA is not a get out of jail free card. It's a huge warning sign that a much bigger stroke could be coming. So you get to an ER no matter what. Okay, so you've spotted the signs, you did the right thing, and you're at the hospital. What happens now? Let's walk through the game plan because knowing what's coming can make a really stressful time feel just a little bit more in control. The hospital's approach is pretty systematic. It really breaks down into three big steps. First, they have to diagnose it, usually with a quick brain scan. Step two, and this is the most urgent part, is all about restoring that blood flow. And then step three, once you're stable, the team starts planning for your recovery and how to prevent another one. In that first phase, the number one mission is to get that blocked pipe open and get blood flowing again. For a stroke caused by a clog, like this one, the main tool is a powerful medication that can actually dissolve the clot. But these drugs work best within the first few hours, which, again, is why that T for time in B-E-F-A-S-T is just so critical. So when it comes to dealing with clots, there are basically two main options. For bigger clots in bigger arteries, surgeons can sometimes go in and physically pull the clot out. That's a thrombectomy. 
But remember how we talked about those tiny little arteries deep in the brain? Yeah, they're usually just too small to get the surgical tools in there. That's why for lacunar strokes, the go-to treatment is usually those clot-busting meds. Okay, so once the immediate danger is over and treatment is working, the big question on everyone's mind is, why? Why did this happen? And understanding the why is your absolute best tool for making sure it doesn't happen again. Let me be as clear as I can be about this. The number one, top of the list, main reason people have lacunar strokes is chronic high blood pressure, hypertension. It all goes back to that fire hydrant and garden hose idea. All that pressure day in and day out just wears down those tiny little arteries until they're damaged and easy to block. And this is what it actually looks like up close. On one side, you've got a healthy artery. It's like a brand new clean pipe. Blood just zips right through. But now look at the at-risk one. It's gotten narrow and hard and kind of gunked up with plaque. It's pretty easy to see how a tiny little clot could get stuck in there, right? Now, high blood pressure is usually the main villain, but it often has a few sidekicks. Other big risk factors are things like diabetes, having high cholesterol, and definitely smoking. And yeah, getting older and your family history play a part, and you can't change those. But you can manage these other things, and that's where your power is. Okay, we've talked about what it is, why it happens, and how it's treated. Let's move on to my favorite part, and it's the most hopeful part, your path to recovery. Because there's some really good news here. This is just fantastic news. Because these strokes are so small and specific, the brain's ability to bounce back is pretty incredible. People often start to feel better and regain function, not in weeks or months, but sometimes in just hours or days. And look at this number. This is huge. More than 90% of people who have a lacunar stroke recover a whole lot, substantially, within those first three months. That is just an amazing statistic. And it's a huge reason to feel really optimistic. And you're not on this road alone. You're going to have a whole team backing you up. Physical therapists to help with strength and balance. Occupational therapists to help you get back to daily activities speech therapists if you need them, even cognitive therapists to help with things like memory and focus. It's a team effort. And from here on out, the name of the game is prevention. This is your new checklist. Taking your meds, keeping that blood pressure under control, moving your body, kicking the smoking habit, and eating good food. This is how you take back control of your health. And hey, can I just pause here for a second? Because this is so important. A stroke isn't just physical. It's emotional. It's mental. It is completely, 100% normal to feel depressed or anxious after something like this happens. You are not alone in that feeling. And asking for help with it is a sign of strength, not weakness. Look, the road ahead takes work, but every single step forward is a win. You have to celebrate that progress. You've been through a lot. You really, really have got this. So I'll just leave you with this one little question to think about. After all this, what's just one small thing, one tiny change you can make today for the health of your brain? Maybe it's just checking your blood pressure or going for a five-minute walk. Every little step matters. Thanks for joining me on The Explainer. Thanks for listening to Diseases Simplified. This episode was created with the aid of AI technology, including voice generation, to improve clarity and accessibility. All medical content is based on current literature, carefully curated and independently reviewed by a U.S. board-certified physician. Please remember, the information in this podcast is for educational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Always consult your own healthcare provider for diagnosis and treatment tailored to your needs. Stay curious, stay informed, and we'll see you next time.